Um, so up next we have a video um, which will be presented by Elias Villa. He's the lead analyst for CARB's filter-based um, PM25 mass analysis lab. So please welcome Elias. Hey everyone, I'm Elias. Can you hear me in the back? Yes, awesome. Um, so you're all in for a treat. I know you're all excited for lunch, but you're about to, you're about to witness the world premiere of our life in a PM 2.5 filter video. It's great. <laughs> but all jokes aside, I'd like to give about 90% of the credit for this video to Allie Adams. This is her brainchild, and she worked very hard and through many constraints and uh, unfortunately I read a lot of red tape to make a video. Weird, right? So thank you, Ali. Um, I'd also like to thank Denise. Okay. Cool, I get to press play so I can talk for a little while longer. What's up, guys? Um, I'd also like to thank Den Denise Cellini who helped to produce this. She was integral in making this look great um, and you'll see that in a second. So I'd like to start the video with a caveat. This is only part of our uh, extremely complicated and detailed laboratory procedure. Um, this is an all-encompassing, so don't try to run your lab based on this video. Um, uh, but beyond that, enjoy. So throughout the video, I'm gonna kind of give you an update of what's going on, uh, so like a da David Attenborough-esque explanation. Um, but yeah, all right, enjoy. There's Angus. <laughs> so this is me setting up our freeway. Those are our relative humidity and temperature sensors. Those are all the filters I handle. Inspecting a filter, only the best ones go out to the field. This is me double checking all of the weights. Super important. So now I'm packing them up and getting them ready to send to the field. time by the way I'm just that good So now that I'm done with um, the freeway, I'll hand them off to sample handling to prepare for the shipment to the field. So this is our sample handlers completing the chain of custody, loading up the filters, and 
verifying all the cassette IDs and storing them in those containers. So now they're packaged up and ready to go to the field. Um, here's our warehouse staff getting them ready for UPS. Isn't this music great? So now we're in the uh, field operation side of it, and here's Dustin Goto uh, loading in some filters. So the filter will sample for 24 hours, and this is a great time lapse of that. And Dustin is back to pull the data and the filter. So then, yeah, the samples are shipped back to the lab, and here's sample handling again, handling again, um, receiving the filters, filling out chain of custody, verifying the temperature at receipt. Here's our star again. So <laughs> after we receive the filters from the field, uh, we'll post weigh them to verify the mass. This is me decoupling them, uh, getting them out of those cassettes and ready to weigh. This one's actually sped up. As it says on the screen there, each filter has to condition for 24 hours in our specific relative humidity and temperature. This is me performing daily calibrations to ensure that the balance is reading accurately. Uh, 
Um, and this is me checking the data from a post wave. This is me putting a thing in a bag. Um, and here I'm checking that each control is within range. And after I'm done post weighing, samples have to be stored for one year in cold storage, and then five years in our archive after that. And that's the video. I, I don't know if we have time, but do you have any questions? We have time. In the back. The temperature of cold storage? Um, that's a great question, and I don't know the exact answer off the top of my head, because being up here makes me very nervous. <laughs> uh, I'll get back to you. I'll look into it. Anyone else? Oh, back there, yes, Carl. Hi, Elias. Uh, the, um the plastic holders, I think they're Durlin or, or, or um, polycarbonate, I'm not sure what they are, but uh, they leak over time. Do you mm -hmm. test those and um, do you keep the top half and bottom half together or you just randomly connect them? That's an amazingly good question, Carl. One that I'll have to think about. Um, but no, for those cassettes, we don't test them in the sense that we don't put them out through an instrument and try a leak check but we do retire filters that it begin to become loose so that it doesn't cause any jamming issues or leaks, as you say. But yeah, to answer your question fully, we just pair them randomly and make sure that they fit properly. If you do get some that are loose, I recommend just putting it aside, making a note on it. Just, you can even write like Elias, throw this away, dummy. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Um, just wanna say thanks for putting that video together. That was pretty impressive. Again, not me, all Allie. Okay, thanks Allie. <laughs> um, you guys process a tremendous amount of work and I, I've dealt with you guys specifically and, and you guys have always been awesome in returning the responses, answering questions and what have you. Um, is there anything that, from the lab's perspective, that you can communicate to site operators on some things that make it a little bit challenging for you guys that we're, maybe we can improve on on our side of the house? Wow, there's a lot to unpack there. Thank you for the, for the appreciation, I appreciate that. Um, and yeah, I guess it's a, that's a complicated question. There is always you know, small things that might hinder the process, but I would say the greatest challenge is incomplete information, and that all goes back to the chain of custody form. If we have to have our sample handling staff contact field staff, to get that information, it just slows down the process, could result in validations. So just, um, I, I can't give you like a panacea, uh, but what I can say is that maybe incorporating a review process for those, which I think your staff does, and your staff tend to be great with that, um, that would help to alleviate those issues. I could have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's one more, or a few more, yes, up in front. Is there a cleaning process for this cassettes? The holders, because I know I haven't met yet a person that uses gloves to handle the cassettes while in the field. I know it's highly recommended, but that's unfortunate but they, to hear. They come to you with, you know, chicken, you know, grease or whatever. <laughs> Is that a cleaning? Yeah, that's a, another good question. Yes. So, well, first off, when we handle the cassettes, we always wear gloves, so we're not getting our chicken grease on them too. Um, but then we do run them through a dishwasher several times, in fact, um, and then they're cleaned and dried after each use. So they're clean when they come out to the field, maybe not clean when they get back. Um, question in the back. Yeah, thanks. So, I, you know, you talked about how you store them in cold storage for a year and then five years after that. I was just wondering, you know, how often do you actually go back and pull a sample and look at it again? and, and you know, why might you do that under what circumstances? Uh, another good question. So I've been with, I've been the analyst in the section for a long time, about a year now. Um, <laughs> and it hasn't happened that I have had to pull a filter yet. So I'd say not that often, yeah. 
but I, I will, I'll get back, I'll ask my more experienced staff and get back to you on that if you did want a better non-sarcastic answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, thank you guys.